right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. I'm Katie from Hackster. Welcome to the Supercharge Your Products with Sony Espressence and, and Edge Impulse Embedded ML webinar. We've got Jenny Plunkett here with us today to share more about how you can use Edge Impulse to build future-proof solutions with smart sensor analysis, image processing, and data filtering using Sony Espressence. Uh, Jenny is a Texas Longhorn and software engineer working as a user success engineer at Edge Impulse. Since graduating from the University of Texas, she has been working in the IoT space from consumer engineering and developer support for ARM Embed to consulting engineering for the Pelion device management platform. Uh, so the first 45 minutes of today's webinar will include a presentation and demo, and the last 15 minutes will be open for questions. So if you do have questions during the event, uh, go ahead and post those in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen, and Jenny will get to as many of those questions as she can before the end of the webinar. Um, so again, as part of this webinar, Edge Impulse is giving away a Sony Spressons main board and extension board to three winners who are uh, attending the presentation and demo with us live today. So winners will receive an email um, announcing that and how to claim that prize later next week. And um, thanks again for joining us. I'm going to let Jenny take it from here. Great. Thank you. Um, and uh, thanks for joining me today, everybody. Um, so you already heard a little brief overview of what we're gonna be doing, but today we're going to just overview um, and deep dive into how you can add um, Edge AI to your Sony Spressence using Edge Impulse. Um, and the Sony Spressence is a great little microcontroller and we'll go over some types of sensor data that you can use um, with Edge Impulse to do Edge AI. Um, what exactly is Edge AI? Um, let me go into the agenda here. So we're gonna look at a little bit of what type of sensor data you can use for embedded ML. What is embedded ML? How can you assemble some high quality data sets? How do you train and design a highly accurate model um, using Edge Impulse? How do you then deploy this model to on the edge and onto your Sony Spressence? And then we're gonna do a live demo of the studio, collecting some data uh, and then deploying it to our device. So first off, um, before we get started into you know, collecting our data, what actually is embedded ML and why is it useful? So let's take a look at an example of a current IoT embedded application today. So for example, this is a little IoT application that's a, been deployed into the field. It is an industrial application that is um, taking the peak temperature data um, at one time an hour or two, and then sending that into the cloud and analyzing that data. Um, just use analyzing things like, uh, is the temperature different from 8 a.m. compared to 9 a.m., um, things like that. So we're gathering the peak temperature and are sending it to the cloud. And then based on that data, we're changing the settings on the device. So we're sending data back onto the device to change whatever settings in order to start collecting new data. And we're, all, we're doing this all from a temperature sensor on a Sony Spressence, for example. So we're only getting a, um, only 24 hours worth of data. So one peak temperature per hour. So we're only getting 24 data points. So you know, there's more than just one minute per an hour. Um, there's 60 minutes per an hour. So we're missing a lot of data points there. Um, and what we find from our industrial IoT experience that 99% of sensor data is actually currently discarded due to cost, bandwidth, or power strains, constraints. This means that most industrial sensors only use about 1% of their data. Um, we don't wanna send all of the data, all, all 24 hours worth of data um, for every single second of peak temperature and um, peak and other types of data, because that's gonna to use too much power on a device, it's going to make the battery run down low. And for devices that are in the field, IoT devices, they don't have as much power as your MacBook would, for example. So we don't wanna be sending all that data because it's gonna take up too much power and too much bandwidth on our network and cost too much, essentially. So we see that lots of interesting events actually get lost. Um, so for example, here's another signal that we have for accelerometer data. We have our peak motion here on the left, and we have a bunch of other different types of X, Y, and Z accelerometer IMU data here. Um, and this is over an hour. So we're just taking that one first minute, that peak motion sample, sending that over the cloud and getting that collection um, in our cloud platform. So we see that one peak on the left and all of these peaks look pretty similar. Um, but if we look further on the right here, this peak actually looks much different than, we, than the peak that we see on the left. Um, but we're actually going to be missing that peak information data because we're only sending that first sample. So what can we do uh, in order to make sure that we're missing this important, make sure that we're not missing this important information? <clears throat> 
So we could take the average of the motion and send that instead of all of the data in its raw form. But as we can see, signal numbers can actually be misleading. So on the top, we have the example of what an up-down motion would look like on an X, Y, and Z axis. And on the bottom, we have what a circular motion would look like. If I'm taking the device and I'm moving it in a circular motion versus in an up-down motion, these are the resulting signals. So if we take the average or the root mean squared of these signals, um, they actually end up looking really similar. So the average of this top data is 3.36 and the average of the bottom is 3.35. And these numbers are really, really similar, but these motions of the X, Y, and Z axis are quite different in actuality, up, down versus circular. So the average root mean squared actually doesn't tell us that much more information than a peak sample would in this case. So how do we solve this problem? How do we make sure we analyze the important events in our data um, without having to send every single input? So on-device intelligence is the solution here, and specifically pattern identification. So in the terms of temperature, again, uh, if I want to send the result of a pattern identification, such as temperature varies in a way that I've never seen before, I need on-device detail intelligence for this. I need something that says, hey, this looks different than all the other samples I've sent previously. Or you could send other types of patterns like a vibration pattern that is heard that will lead to a fault state in a week. Or the machine is oscillating differently in the factory than all the other machines. This information is really valuable because these key data points are different than what we've seen previously uh, or in our previous patterns. So machine learning on our device helps us find the rules. In normal programming, we're looking at input data plus rules is our result. But in machine learning, instead of looking at input data plus rules, we're instead looking at the input data plus the result that we want to see or the result that we're looking for, that equals the rules or the patterns that we're identifying. So focusing on data-driven engineering rather than focusing on the output or forcing an algorithm to fit the data decreases our bandwidth and cost usage and thereby our power constraints and increasing our privacy, accuracy, and speed on our device. All of the intelligence is done on the device instead of in the cloud. So we're only sending important information uh, and thereby uh, decreasing the amount of data that we need to ingest and analyze. So Edge Impulse is the leading embedded machine learning platform for this process. We are the complete end-to-end -end platform for machine learning ops for embedded devices or Lynx devices, for example. Um, and today we're going to be specifically looking at the Sony Spresens. But Edge Impulse handles the entire pipeline for you. you can, we can help you manually collect new data and label your data set, design your machine learning model or your impulse, test your model and validate that it works on real-life data sources, deploy your model to the field and optimize it for your specific model architecture and your available computer MCU processor and RAM capabilities. And then we can, can repeat this for as ever long, forever long we want to in order to make sure our model is as accurate as we want for our field application. So this is just a more drilled down system design overview of the machine learning ops platform that we provide with Edge Impulse. Um, what you see here, most of these are free and available for you to use today, so you can sign up at edgeimpulse.com. But if you want to get more detailed instructions on this, we have our documentation on our website at docs.edgeimpulse.com. But continuing on the machine learning ops platform, um, let's start off with, you know, now that we know what embedded machine learning is, how do we start collecting a data set specifically for embedded machine learning? So our data collection, we want to assemble a high quality, robust labeled data set because data driven engineering is key here, rather than trying to fit an algorithm to our data. Let's design an algorithm around the data rather than the other way around. So first we need to determine our use case. Uh, these are just a few little images I have here of different types of things you can do with sensor data on a typical microcontroller or a IoT device. So you could recognize sounds from audio, for example, like a meow or you could classify images. Is there a cat or a dog in the image, for example? You could do biosignal analysis where you're analyzing heart rate or ECG data, or you could do a detecting abnormal vibration from an IMU or an accelerometer on a device, detecting when a machine in a factory is about to fail. 
You could also do object detection where you could determine whether there's a cat and a toy and a dog all in the same image. And this object detection application usually takes a higher level of processing power like a Linux device, but that's still edge AI. So really anything that includes messy, high resolution sensor data. Some verticals that Edge Impulse is specifically looking at includes predictive maintenance, asset tracking and monitoring, and human interfaces. So some examples for predictive maintenance could include smart grids, motor and pump maintenance, or home appliances. Um, for asset tracking, we're looking at things like cold chain monitoring. Situational awareness um, is a, a human in the field wearing a, a helmet in the work site, for example, or building occupancy. You could also do human interfaces where we're looking at things like human bio data or touch interfaces um, or gestures from things like radar or accelerometers. So once you've determined your use case, all you need to do is start collecting your sensor data. So there's pretty much countless options for you to collect your sensor data out here. Um, so here's some quick examples. Uh, you could use an accelerometer for gestures or a camera to identify whether there's a person or not in an image water level for water quality at a work site, for example, air quality, bio data signals, the, the options are pretty much endless. Or you can even use a combination of these sensors for a concept called sensor fusion. Um, and these are even more complex machine learning use cases where you can take multiple different types of sensor inputs and combine them together to analyze even more complex patterns in your data, specifically on the edge. So we're going to first start by collecting our data samples, and I'll go into further detail on this in the live demo just after these slides. Um, but Edge Impulse basically allows you to collect any type of sensor data you want using our built-in APIs or our web GUI, oh, or there's a bunch of other ways as well. You can directly upload. Um, but in this case, we're looking at uploading images from the camera on the Sony Expressence or from your web phone or from your or from the web via your mobile phone. So you can directly connect your Sony Expressence via the Edge Impulse CLI to the Edge Impulse Studio. As you can see, I have a peace sign there on the bottom left. You can also upload your images directly from the upload GUI, or you can take images from your mobile phone's camera and label them as you see fit. So on the left, we're looking at person versus non-person, and on the right, we're looking at something like apples versus bananas. Here's some other examples of image classification where I'm looking at the, is a egg cracked or not? You could also do something like forest fire detection or apples versus oranges or versus bananas. These are just a few examples. For gesture recognition, you could use things like an accelerometer data or Doppler radar data to analyze the type of motion that you're doing with the device. So in this case, our CTO Jan is moving the uh, ST board around on, the, on his desk either up and down or in a snake motion. All of this can be determined, all of these patterns can be identified via edge AI or embedded machine learning. You can also recognize sounds from audio for keyword spotting for things like, hey Google, for example. Um, these are all can be done on the edge. So you could do things like analyzing whether your faucet has a leak or not um, based on the sound that is coming in through the microphone on your device. So now that we've determined our use case, how do we actually go in and design a algorithm for our machine learning model? Um, I don't know how to write machine learning code, but in this case, Edge Impulse handles that all for us. So how do we get from model to device to cloud? So on the left, we're gonna take our raw sensor data and what we need to do first in order to make sure that our model is as small as possible for our embedded machine learning use case is to extract the meaningful features from the raw data via a, a process called signal pre-signal pre-processing or signal pre-processing. And then we're gonna train the model on those extracted features. Then once we've trained our model, we're going to then deploy onto our device via a C++ library or an Arduino library with the Edge Impulse SDK flash that onto our device using our whatever firmware that we've written or if we're using the pre-built binaries de deployed by Edge Impulse, run our signal processing code, extract that signal processing features from our raw data that we've just collected on the device, run our inference without connecting to the internet at all, gather what the predicted output is based on that new raw sensor data, 
collect that conclusion and then send that back to the cloud instead of all the raw data. So is the machine oscillating at a different speed or different way than any other machine in the factory? Or is there a person or a non-person in this image? That conclusion will be sent to the cloud instead of the actual data. But collecting this raw data, extracting these features, training the model, this part is really hard. So Edge Impulse takes care of that for you. So this is the Impulse design page that we'll see in the live demo here in a moment. But it goes from left to right, essentially. And this is just a GUI version of what we'll see in the Edge Impulse Studio. Um, and this is also just a GUI version of Python code that you would have written, written for a platform like TensorFlow. So this is for an image detection or image classification model. So on the left, we're going to take our raw image data that we've uploaded into the studio, all of our labeled data, is there a person or a non-person? We're going to squash it down and make sure it's all normalized so everything looks right. So that's the raw data. Our next block here, this is our signal processing block. We're basically going to take all these images, all the hex values of each pixel and its color. We're going to take all those hex values and normalize it and extract those features in such a way that we're getting the most important parts of each image. And that's the signal processing portion. And then the purple is our machine learning block, where we're going to be taking our extracted features from our signal processing block and pass those into our pre-written Python code that Edge Impulse has available to you. Pass it into the Python code, run the machine learning model, and train it on a number of cycles, and then output our predicted features. Is there, for example, an apple or an orange, or is it unknown in the image, or is there a person or not in the image, for example? And all of this can be done without writing any code at all. Or you can write your own code if you'd like, and I'll show you that in the live demo. So once you've deployed to your edge device, um, once, you've, once you've trained your model and you've uploaded all your raw data, now you want to deploy back to your device. So using the Edge Impulse SDK or using the pre-built firmware from the studio, you can directly do this really easily. So here's just a few examples of types of models that you can deploy to current devices in today's space. Um, you can do anomaly detection or sensor applications for things like temperature data or even audio data on a Cortex M0. And as your processing capability for your IoT device gets, gets more and more advanced, the more types of edge AI applications you can do. Things like video classification require a lot of RAM and processing power that some of our smaller IoT devices can't currently do today. Um, so once you get up to like a Jetson Nano, then you can start doing video um, and object classification that way or object detection. Here's another little overview of our supported hardware that we have on Edge Impulse. This is constantly updating almost weekly. Um, so check back on our documentation website to see what other types of boards that we support. But again, even though we're looking at the Sony Expressions today, um, we can support almost any board as long as you can flash a C++ library into, onto the firmware, or you can upload data via serial port. So I can get into more instructions on that if you'd like, and you can also ask us about that on our forum at forum.edgeimpulse.com. So today we're looking specifically at the Sony Spresence. So this is what the deployment will look like for the Spresence from the Edge Impulse Studio. We'll take our raw data, upload that into Edge Impulse Studio, do some machine learning, extract those signal processing features, output our prediction score in our confusion matrix, which you see on the right, and I'll get into that in the live demo and continuously collecting more data and further refining our model. And this is where data-driven engineering really comes in again. So we have a bunch of different options specifically for the Sony Expressions to deploy. Um, if you're using one of our supported sensor formats, like the IMU sensor that's on the Sony Expressions um, add-on or the camera attachment or the mi microphone um, from the add-on board, for example, all of these types of sensor data have the ability to flash a pre-written or pre-built firmware application directly to the board without having to write any code. Um, so that's available for you depending on the sensor data that you've uploaded into the Edge Impulse Studio. You can also deploy as a C++ library if you want to write your own firmware. Um, you can do that through the C++ library, through the, with the tutorials on the Sony website, or you can do the Arduino library and directly integrate firmware drivers for other types of sensors on the, um, on the Sony Express Sense using the, their own Arduino libraries, and then just 
simply integrating the deployed Arduino library from the Edge Impulse Studio to do your signal processing and inferencing directly on the device just view through a few simple function calls. And then you can also deploy directly to your mobile phone again without having to write any code. This is especially cool for things like audio and camera applications and image, ob image and object detection applications because you can directly build your project in your mobile app on your phone and classify new image is directly from your built and trained model directly in the Chrome or Safari browser on your phone. Um, and this should work on any mobile phone as long as you have a internet connection and have a camera. So how do you get started? Well, you can sign up for free at edgeimpulse.com. Um, you can also, if you're interested in learning more in depth details about this whole machine learning op cycle or pipeline, um, I'd highly recommend checking out Sean Himmel's Coursera course. Um, you can even earn a badge for completing the course and they're currently working on more content as we speak. So now that I've done the boring slides part, let's get into the actual live demo of the Edge Impulse Studio. And also, I'm just going to check the chat really quickly here to see if anyone has any relevant questions. And now that we're in the live demo portion, I'd be happy to answer questions as we go along as well. Let's see. Can we, for this motion data, show the actual path instead of the loss axis? Um, Gilbert, can you clarify your question there? <clears throat> Um, is microphone audio quality of Sony Expressense significantly better than PDM microphone on Arduino Nano? And does it have any effect on voice sound, other audio recognition quality? Well, the, the Expressense does have integrated um, audio signal processing code directly on the board on their chip. So it does have better microphone quality than other boards that are available. Um, but it really depends on the, uh, of course, again, on the microphone that you have soldered onto the add-on board. Um, but we can give you more details on that question on our forum as well, if you want to ask it there. Let's see. All right, well, I guess I'm going to go into the live demo because the other questions I will answer later. So I just wanted to point out that this is our homepage. Um, you can get started using Edge Impulse in as little as five minutes if by scanning this QR code on your phone through your camera. Um, you can start collecting data, labeling your images, and training your model all within five minutes without even having to make an Edge Impulse account. So I recommend checking that out. It's a really cool thing to get started with. Also, our documentation is really robust. So if there is a question on you know, what boards are supported or how do I actually deploy um, using the Edge Impulse SDK? How do I integrate that into my own firmware? All of, we have a, tons of code examples and different things here available for you on our documentation website as well. And also here's the one specifically for the Sony Expressence. We have specific instructions on how you connect a microphone for audio examples and also our camera examples. But first off, I wanted to show an image detection application. So this is a typical person detection application. Um, we can see, in, based on the image that we have taken on our camera on our Sony Expressence, we want to determine whether there's a person or not a person in the image. So this is the Edge Impulse dashboard. Um, for every Edge Impulse dashboard, this is equivalent to one machine learning use case. So like I said, we're looking at whether there's a person or not in the image. And it, the, the Edge Impulse Studio specifically walks you through step-by-step step how to get started collecting your new data, designing your machine learning impulse or your model, and then deploying it. Also, nothing in Edge Impulse is a black box. If you're familiar with writing Python code for TensorFlow, for example, all of the intermediate training data and files is all available for you to download and use directly in a Python script at any point in time, once you've trained and built your model, of course. So this is the dashboard. Moving on to the devices tab, this is where I can connect a new device. And if I wanted to, I could start collecting new data directly from my Sony's presence. I've just connected my board to my edge input to my computer. So I'm just gonna run the CLI here. Make sure I have the right. <clears throat> oh, 
edge impulse daemon, connect that to my project. Okay. So uh, all I've done here is if you can see, let me increase the font here really quick. So this is the edge impulse CLI. All I've done here is now that my board is connected over USB, I'm going to select my project via the uh, CLI prompts, and then I'm gonna name it. So I'm gonna name it the Spressense. And this, this is going to directly connect my, all the sensors that I have available on my Sony Spressense to this project. So I've already had this project up and you can see that my Spressense has already been connected to my project. And you can see with the green, right, green light here that it's ready to go. So the two types of labels that I'm looking at for this machine learning use case is, is there a person or not in the image? So my two labels are person versus non-person. So if I wanna take a new picture specifically from my Spressence for these types of labels, I'm going to click on the dropdown and select camera. And you can see the live camera feed directly from the Spressence. It's really grainy, but you should be able to see it right here. So I'm gonna say, this is a picture of me. So I'm gonna say this label is person. I'm gonna click start sampling. And we should see, oops, snapshot failed. That's okay. Looks like we are missing something here. I'm gonna choose a smaller size and see if that works. Well, <laughs> that's not how it always goes in live demos. But essentially what will happen is the camera will take a picture, upload it over the Edge Impulse CLI directly into the Edge Impulse Studio, and you'll see that new piece of data pop up right here. But I already have a bunch of images already uploaded. In this case, I have a person and non-person. So non-person contains no people and person contains at least one person, sometimes more like this one. So I can upload all my raw data that way. I can upload via our GUI, or when it's working, I can upload via the serial port directly on my Sony Spressence. I can also upload directly from the camera on my mobile phone. And I can split it into my training and testing categories. So here is I have my training data and here I have my test data. So now that we have a really robust training and test data set for our machine learning person detection model, we're going to do our impulse design. So like I showed in the slides, our impulse design page goes from left to right. It's just a GUI um, formatting for our Python data or for, it's just a GUI over mostly Python scripts that we have pre-written for you in Edge Impulse. So our, on the left, we have our raw image data block. Um, this is a basically a normalizing block that just make sure all, all the images are the right size and similar to each other, um, at least in width and height. This block right here is our signal pre-processing block where we're going to extract the features from our images. Um, this will make it such that our model doesn't have to be so big. If we train our model based on every single raw pixel from our images, that model is gonna be way too big to handle. So we wanna make sure we extract only the most important parts of our images um, and use that to train our model. And again, like I said, these are just pre-written Python scripts available for you to use that are wrapped in a GUI. We also have a bunch of other types of um, blocks available for you to use from different types of audio blocks for human or non-human audio, um, spectral analysis for things like accelerometer data or other time series data. Um, and you can also use raw data without having to use without having to do any feature extraction at all. Um, if you are some, doing something like Doppler radar, for example, it might be helpful to use every single piece of raw data rather than smoothing the signal out. You can also add a custom block and our documentation for that is available in our building custom blocks page. Um, but basically you can do write any Python code that you want um, and use that as a custom block in Edge Impulse to train on those features that you've done, that you've created yourself. Purple is our transforming block, and that's where we have written a pre-written code for training a uh, machine learning model using TensorFlow in case of image detection or image classification. 
We also have a couple other options available for you. And again, these learning blocks options will change depending on the type of sensor data that you have uploaded. So if I had audio here or something else, I, I would see an anomaly detection block as well. So, but in this case, just be, I'm just doing image classification, so I'm going to just choose the transfer learning. I can also do multiple blocks on top of each other in order to put multiple input features into my machine learning block. And then on the right, we have our output features, person or non-person is our predicted features for our embedded ML. So I've saved my impulse. Moving on to the signal pre-processing. Like I said, we're just taking each individual pixel, uh, a text value, and processing it down into a normalized format that we can analyze in our machine learning script and train on. So we're just going to make it RGB, not changing it to grayscale if we want. But Edge Impulse also has this great feature where we can view the on-device performance time. So based on the features for, this is for Cortex M7, I can also change it to the Sony Spressence if I go to the dashboard and click on Sony Spressence. Going back to the image classification page, we can see that the on-device performance did change depending on the type of um, processor that you've chosen. So because I just went from a Cortex N7 down to a Cortex M4F, it, does, it did go up by one millisecond for processing time. And this is just the amount of time it takes to get from these hex values into these processed um, float values on the device for new data. And it's going to take about four kilobytes of RAM. But now that we have chosen our single pre-processing uh, parameters, we're going to generate features based on all of our uploaded training data. I, all I have to do is click on this green generate features button, and I get this interesting 3D visualization on the right here. This visualization shows me exactly each piece of data that I have and what is its label. Uh, I can view the features specifically for each individual sample here. And as you can see later on for other types of sensor data, this visualization gets a little bit more interesting because as we, as we can see, depending on our types of data that we have uploaded, our labels can be clumped together or grouped together in a certain way such that it's really easy for us to determine whether a sample is mislabeled or not. Moving on to our transplanting page. So again, like I said, this is just a GUI um, wrapping around Python, a Python script. And this is using TensorFlow in this case. Um, but we have pre-written code here for you for different types of sensors. And this is the default that we have in Edge Impulse um, for image classification, specifically for this type of processor. Um, but all I had to do is click Start Training. But say I know how to write Python code, all I can do here is click this button, switch into Keras Expert Mode, and start writing my own Python code. And then all again, all I have to do is click on Start Training, and I'll view the same output here on the right. So you can see the confusing matrix between a non-person and person for the validation set of my machine learning model and the, the training cycles. Again, I can see my signal processing features and whether every single piece of data was predicted to be its correct label. If it was missed predicted, it'll show up as a red dot. And if it was predicted correctly, it'll show up as a green dot. So this really helps me make sure that all of my data is um, accurately labeled and I'm getting the most accuracy I can out of my machine learning model, specifically for this mobile net V1 type of image classification um, use case. In this case, 80% uh, accuracy is really good for what I'm trying to do with this model. Um, if I want to get it even more accurate, what I just need to do is upload more data or do other things with my machine learning Python script or changing my parameters in the visual mode. And we can also see our on-device performance. This is how much time it takes to get from our extracted features from the signal processing block into an output predicted um, prediction. Is it a person or non-person in the image? So that's the complete machine learning pipeline. But now that I have my trained and built my model, um, I don't want to deploy it onto my device just yet. I want to see how it's going to perform with real-time data. So what I can do is based on all the test data that I have, the model has not seen any of this test data yet. 
So what I can do is I can pass all of that data directly into my trained model without having to write any code or deploy it at all. So I can click classify all and this passes all of my images directly into my trained model and we'll see a full table result of the expected outcome versus its predicted outcome and the percent accuracy. So we'll just take a moment here. Let me look at the chat and see if anyone's asking any questions. Lots of questions happening. Uh, just a reminder, uh, if you are asking questions, there's so many in the, the chat that it's getting hard to keep track of them. So if you have questions, make sure you post them in the Q&A section as well so that we can uh, make sure that Jenny sees those. Yeah, the chat, <laughs> the chat is awesome. Thank you guys for being so um, talkative. This is great. Let's see, let me look at the GP, the Q&A. Also, um, Armagon is here from Sony as well. She has commented in the chat. So she might have some answers for you guys too. Great. But anyways, now that we have finished our classifying our test data, <clears throat> we can see here that our model, it performs decently well on real life data. So on our validation set, it was about 80% accurate, but on our test data set, it's a little bit less accurate around 72%. Um, what, we need to, what we can do here is we can sort of rebalance and, and shift around our training data to our testing data to get a more even accuracy, or we can just continue, continuously add more data to our test set or training set and retrain our model to continuously refine and, and get a model that will work even better in the field. And I already have a thousand plus images in this set. So it, it should be pretty accurate in the field. And again, you can see a feature explorer here specifically for the test data set. Um, and this just makes it really easy to see again, data quality, how's our data clustering, which ones are mispredicted, which ones are accurately predicted and um, where these lie compared, where these features lie compared to other types of images that we have uploaded. So say I want to add more data, but I really like how this model is performing. I can also version my project at this, this exact point in time. All of the data that I have uploaded, all of its labels, all of the code that I've written if, or code that I've not written for my machine learning model and signal processing, I can save it all and wrap it up in basically like a zip file. And I can go back to that version at any point in time from this page. So I can also store it here. And then when I have a version that's stored, I can click on a button and restore at, to that version at any point in time, add whatever new data I want, see if I like that model. And if I don't like that new model, I can go back at any time. So now that we've done our model testing, we really like how this model is performing. Um, we've done we've done a refinement of our model, we've versioned our project, we've retrained and we've added more data. Let's go on to deployment. Edge Impulse has lots of different options available for deployment here for you. Um, you can write your own code and integrate a C++ library or an Arduino library, for example, into your firmware. Or you can download a pre-built firmware application specifically for your board if, if your sensor type and board is supported on Edge Impulse. And we're constantly supporting new boards, so check that out, check back for that. Um, but in this case, we're going to select on the Sony Spresence, and this is going to select, this is going to create a pre-built binary that we can directly just drag and drop essentially onto our device and start running our machine learning inferencing code directly on the edge um, without writing any code. So I click on Sony Spresence, and this is going to make a pre-built firmware application for doing image detection for is there a person or not on the image. I'm going to select our optimizations here and Edge Impulse offers a, an interesting thing called the Eon compiler, where essentially it's it's the tensor, it's taking the TensorFlow compiler, but we've made our own compiler that completely reduces the amount of RAM and ROM flash, flash usage down from about 391K in this case, down to 305K flash. So it reduces it pretty much by 100K. Um, so it's really nice in order to make, get a really, really solid, really small um, firmware application available for you to use on your IoT device, because space is really key here when we're looking at industrial applications. So I've built that firmware and I've downloaded it to my computer. And all I have to do here is unzip the zip file that it's created for me, double click on it, and then double click on the 
flash command that is available from my for my operating system. So in this case, I am doing a Mac. So do click flash Mac. It's checking for Python dependencies. I'm going to select the board that's connected to my computer. I'm just going to take one moment here to flash onto my board, and then we'll do inferencing directly on the edge. Just quick, really quickly looking at the Q&A here. I have used Edge Impulse and observed that the training of the model is very fast compared to self-training. Is the model designed less training? Is it compromised? Um, so Edge Impulse is nothing is really black box. You can see exactly what code is used in order to train your model when, like I said, when you click on expert mode. So this expert mode code is exactly what you would have been using to train locally on your computer. Um, so if you have TensorFlow code that you've written, you can directly copy and paste that into the Edge Impulse Studio and start training that way. But the advantages of training on Edge Impulse is essentially that you can use all of the competing processing power um, from our AWS instances to train your model rather than your own local computer resources. So it usually goes much quicker because we're using a, a you know, an array of computers in the cloud to train your model rather than just, you know, the processor power on your MacBook, for example. So I don't think anything gets compromised because it's essentially doing the exact same thing that you'd be doing locally, but you don't have to write any scripts or any code um, to do this process. All it is is you just click a green button. I noticed this person supports GPS. Does Edge Impulse support GPS input data? Um, I have not personally use GPS input data. Um, I'm sure you can get that GPS data. There's drivers. Um, Armagon posted Spressens documentation in the chat. So I'm sure there is explanation there about how to receive GPS data directly from the Spressens. Um, I'd have to think about you know, what type of machine learning use case you would use with GPS data. Maybe there's some sensor fusion type example that you could do with that. Um, but I would check out the Spressens documentation. Maybe type some of your musings and thoughts onto our forum, and we'd be happy to sort of talk that through with you there. Have you seen any applications on the medical field? Um, so biodata is a big one. We're, we're looking at specifically things like analyzing ECG data to look at different sleep stages um, based on you know, a, a wearable. Um, Based on the data that's coming from a wearable, you can use edge embedded ML to analyze you know, sleep patterns based on your heart rate or your temperature. All these different things are things that we're seeing in the medical field. Um, if you have any specific sensor data for other types of medical applications, um, feel free to, to call that out in the chat or on our forum again. Um, and we'd be happy to talk about it with you. <clears throat> If the sensor is moved in a circle, can we see this path in the Edge Impulse dashboard? Um, you can see whether a sensor is moved in a circle. I think you're talking about accelerometer. You can actually see that information. And what I would Google search for that is Edge Impulse Magic Wand. A bunch of our colleagues and ambassadors and um, people in the academic space have made applications using Edge Impulse to, you know, take basically make a magic wand out of um, an Arduino Nano, so you can. Put it around any which way and it actually will draw an image of your pattern that you've drawn onto your computer screen. It won't be in the Edge Impulse dashboard, but you can see what it'll look like on a CLI application, for example. So Google search um, Edge Impulse Magic Wand. Will Edge Impulse support multiple sensor inputs simultaneously? So that's called sensor fusion and stay tuned. Can this code be edited? I'm assuming you're talking about the machine learning code, in which case, yes. Um, like I said before, you can type whatever code you want. I personally am not a Python TensorFlow expert, so I don't use the screen often. But if you're a data scientist and you know how to write TensorFlow code, go for it. And then all you have to do is click Start Training when you're ready to you know, begin building your machine learning model. Is it possible to run the model in multi-core mode? Um, 
that is a question. There is eight cores on the Spressens, and I think, according to Carlos in my previous um, webinar, he said that only six of these cores are available for application use. That's a more technical question that we can debug on our forum, um, or also check out the the Sony Spressens documentation as well. Does Espressens have built-in Wi-Fi or BLE? Um, I know it has, has a Wi-Fi module and it might have a BLE module as well, but you'll have to purchase those separately on the um, on, from the links on the Sony website. But you can see I have some modules um, plugged into this board right now, one of which is a Wi-Fi module. And then the other one is the accelerometer one. Oh, um, <laughs> I for, totally forgot now that we've built and deployed our model, it should be flash onto our Espressens. So let's actually do the edge edge embedded ML, the, uh, the whole point of the Edge Impulse Studio. So I'm just opening up a CLI terminal, terminal right here, and then increase the font. Got distracted with your guys' great questions. Oh, there we go. Now my mouse too big, let me see. Okay, so I have Edge Impulse, now that it's been flashed, the pre-built binary has been flashed onto the Spressense. I'm just going to do edge impulse run impulse. And this will start the pre-built proof of concept application that will take new sensor data from the camera and analyze whether there's a person or a non-person in the image or not a person in the image. So I'm going to click edge impulse run impulse. I'm going to select the serial port that my board is connected to. Take a photo, and as you can see, I'm in frame, so it's correctly identifying me as a person. But if once I scroll out of view of the camera, it should identify as a non-person. Yep. And now we're doing image classification, edge on the edge, directly with the Sony Spressence and edge impulse. And let me go back to the questions here because you guys have great questions. Lots of questions about GPS. Is it possible to expand Spressens with LoRa or equivalent LPWA? Um, I'm sure you can buy a LoRa WAN module and connect it via the add-on board that we have that this, the Spressens has available for purchase. Um, I'm not done it personally, but um, I don't see why not. And the Spressens actually might have some documentation for that on their website. Um, and then, and then it, all you have to do then is um, integrate the Edge Impulse SDK via C++ library or Arduino library, integrate that into your firmware, add all the driver code for your LoRa WAN module, and then you've, you've got an application ready to go. And you can send them directly the inferencing results um, from the Edge Impulse SDK over LoRa WAN, for example, instead of over Wi-Fi or BLE or over serial port. See. Does Edge Impulse have over the air deployment feature? So we have deployment in the sense that we bake a firmware package for you that you can then integrate into your own firmware or a library. Um, so our C++ library is completely um, third party independent. So you don't need any other dependencies other than the code that we give you. Everything is open source and all the source code is available. So as long as you know how to like write a make file, all of that code is available for you to integrate into your firmware from the signal processing code into the inferencing code. Um, all that is available for you to directly integrate into your application. Um, so that's the code that you'll use to build your firmware. And then for any over there updates, you'll need to use another platform for that firmware updates um, to your IoT device that's in the field. Um, so we provide you with the code that you can use to then update, upload, upload and update your model and your firmware, um, but you'll need to use another platform in order to send that back over the air. Um, so we provide you with all the source code that you need in order to update your model and integrate into your firmware, um, but yeah. If you have any other further questions about that though, feel free to email us at hello at edgeimpulse.com as well. Oh, Armagon, you're, you're awesome, posting all these links in the chat. Thank you so much. 
is Edgeimple's a good framework for precision agriculture applications? Um, we actually released a white paper about this the other day. I'm not sure specifically with Edgeimple's, but definitely something that we are looking into for like a case study. Um, I don't remember the details of that off the top of my head, but if you check out our Twitter, um, Artie, our social media manager, should have tweeted out a link to that paper that you can read um, regarding Edge AI and agriculture applications. Um, it's pretty interesting. Oh, there you go. There's one that Armagon posted as well. Um, so Carlos asked, hi, Jenny, did you try de developing a model using the Sony neural network console and converting the model into a TensorFlow one? Um, so the advantages of building and training in the Edge Impulse Studio is that we're providing a bunch of optimizations and, and a custom compiler that you wouldn't get if you built your model elsewhere. So I haven't tried converting into a Sony network console, neural network console into a TensorFlow model um, because the advantages of deploying from the Edge Impulse Studio is that we provide you with the Edge Impulse SDK and all of the associated open source code um, and signal processing features for each of our available platforms. Um, you don't get all that code if you use a pre-built model that you've trained elsewhere. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you're training in the Edge Impulse um, Studio. Uh, it's essentially the same as if you would elsewhere, but we provide you with all of the, you know, the custom link ups of different sensor um, code drivers and things like that. All of that's available, pack all bundled up into a nice little package. Um, on the from the deployment page on the studio, rather than if you took your TensorFlow model from elsewhere and tried to integrate that way. If we're inferencing on motion, it starts listening every two seconds, for example. Does the trained motion also need to start and fit in those two seconds? That's an interesting question. Um, so the edge impulse CLI, if you're using, if you're referring to the pre-built binary, there's actually a um, option that you can pass into the edge impulse run impulse command to do a continuous um, to do a continuous application instead. I think this is the command. I'd have to double check that. But it's something like this: edge impulse run impulse dash dash continuous. Um, this will make it such that your sample data doesn't need to be directly in the middle of a two second window. It can be anywhere in there, and as long as you're doing continuous sampling, it'll say, "Hey." based on the signal processing features that I've extracted, here's one gesture and here's another gesture. And it doesn't need to be exactly in that two second window. Thanks for the question, Gilbert. Great questions, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Does Edge Impulse provide event collection as well? Can these events be exposed via API slash webhooks? So you don't have to deploy your Edge Impulse model directly to an IoT device. You can also deploy to something like a mobile phone um, via WebAssembly, or you can also do um, a, a mobile app. Um, I'm assuming another thing like with JavaScript. Um, there's a bunch of different options available for you. And then if you do use those types of platforms like WebAssembly or JavaScript, you can use things like event API webhooks and the, and you can also do, um, I mean, for IoT development, you can also use API webhooks if you're, if you're doing the application with a Wi-Fi module, for example, um, the, the options are endless, but if you're looking for something specific for, you know, sending inference results, for example, um, feel free to post your use case on our forum and we can help you debug that and pre present you with some more options. Oh, yeah, let me actually open up that really quick. Um, we actually have, while Armin goes on the topic of it, we have another conference coming up here um, that all of our partners, most of our partners at Edge Impulse, our silicon partners, and other people that we're working with in the Edge Embedded ML space um, presenting at our Edge Impulse Imagine conference in September and October. Um, there's going to be a bunch of tech talks from really cool people in the field, um, workshops, and you can also connect with other developers who are doing embedded ML as well. And it's going to be really, really fun. And I'm super excited to watch. Um, it's going to be some great people hosting. So that's Edge Impulse Imagine. Let me see some other questions here. Any boilerplate for a mobile app using an EI model? Um, yes, there is. Uh, if you go to our GitHub here, let me <laughs> sign out of my GitHub account. And I can show you the public page. If you go to github.com slash edge impulse, 
you can see all the public repositories that we have available for you to use. So all of the firmware that we have for our pre-built firmware is not black box at all. You can download exactly the code that we use to make this for each and every single one of our supported platforms. And we also have generalized ones as well. So you can see the one that we did for the Sony that's available here. We also have our mobile client that uses the WebAssembly library available for you to use here as well. So feel free to fork it and make your own um, version of it here. All that's available in our GitHub. So here's the firmware for the Spresence. Post that in the chat. And here is our mobile client that we use to do mobile data collection and inferencing. And by mobile app, this is specifically a web app um, based from a simple HTTP server. Carlos, in terms of your Keras models in the studio, um, if you wouldn't mind, if you could post on our forum, we'd be happy to you know, discuss that in further depth with you there. Um, how can we connect to this Rustin's board to the internet? Well, you'll need a, a networking module, which you can purchase from the Sony website or click on the links from the Sony website. And then it's just a matter of you know, writing the driver code or integrating the driver code into your firmware and then plugging in the Edge Impulse SDK. Um, and for this case, you'd probably use the C++ library. But again, Ar Armagon probably has some uh, Sony documentation specifically for those networking modules that they have for the Spresence as well. Looks like we've got about one minute left. So if you want to answer like one more question or if you have anything else you want to yeah, I think know about. It. I think I think that's pretty much it. For for super technical questions, please email us at hello at edgeimpulse.com or write to us on our forum and we'd be happy to spend lots of time with you there. Great. And we'll be sending out an email with all of that information and those links uh, for you also later um, this week. So mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Jenny. And thank you, Armagon, for answering all the questions and all of the links and everything and just really enjoyed the engagement today. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And uh, we hope to see you again next time. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.